Travis Scott is one of those artists I don't know whether it's necessary to do background information on because like y'all know who Travis Scott is but just for good measure he's a trap artist he's come out with two other albums in his career first it was Rodeo a very dark and moody project that very vividly portrayed the trap lifestyle in a way that was genuinely really hard-hitting it helped that it was so tightly produced and engaging the whole way through it really didn't waste a second of its time and then Travis followed that up with Birds in the Trap which I did think was a letdown but in the grand scheme of trap I think that it has a bit more going for it than a lot of other projects do like I personally would rather listen to this than Amigos project or future project it wasn't monotonous to that level so that was a selling point for me and I didn't really know what to expect going into this project I mean I wouldn't say I've lost all faith in Travis Scott or anything like that and the hype for this thing has been ridiculous so I wanted to believe he could pull through on this one now this project kind of strikes me as our boy doing what he's been doing but the production across the board is a bit more colorful there's a bit more variation in its sound palette but I gotta be honest other than the very hypnotic quality of a lot of the beats here I'm not really seeing what makes this project so appealing on the whole I mean there's an ass load of features uncredited on this thing but a lot of the time they're not enough to save an entire song from just being criminally boring and Travis Scott has never been a fantastic lyricist and this is still a trap album so your expectations should be pretty low going in on that front but this album is made up of almost entirely filler lines even when a song does lay out the foundations for like a topic or idea like on R.I.P. Screw or Coffee Bean they're just attacked in such a half-assed way that I can't even take anything away from them it just strikes me as especially bad on this album I mean just because you're not talking about anything deep or profound doesn't mean you can't go into making a track with a set idea or intention and it just makes the listening experience really monotonous a lot of the time unless you're like really invested in the beats but even those are questionable sometimes and on top of it the performances are just so lackluster like Travis has never blown me away with his technical skills as a rapper but there's just nothing to grab onto in this case I did come away from this album enjoying some songs though stargazing for one is one of the rare moments where I feel like everything is working together pretty harmoniously Travis is rapping about tripping on acid over this very hypnotic beat and I feel like the way the reverb is incorporated into this and Travis's trademark heavily filtered or autotune vocal effect works to its benefit really well it definitely is an effective opener the beat switch is a tad abrupt, but the second phase of the song has a very kaleidoscopic effect to it that it's very easy to get lost in, so it will let it slide this time. I think the only thing that really bothers me about this track is the sample click. The main problem with this is that it adds to how slapped together and unprofessional I already perceived the album to be. It's like, how on earth did this end up in the final studio version of the album. I don't know, it just rubs me the wrong way. Stop Trying to Be God though, I full heartedly like. Hearing Travis talk about staying level-headed and keeping your integrity and desire to do better but not overestimating your importance was really refreshing, especially coming from such a huge mainstream artist. The production has this like hazy synth blanketing the whole thing, the harmonica works in surprisingly well, and then you've got the hmm hmm from Kid Cudi. Thank you, Kid Cudi. I do wish James Blake gave us a little bit more to work with on this track just based on the fact his voice is godly and he could do so much more here, but I find it to be pretty lackluster. Um, but, you know, it's fine. It works pretty snugly into the track. It doesn't really take away from its enjoyability for me, so I'll let it slide. But speaking of vocal inflections on skeletons, oh my god, the way that Travis and Pharrell and Kevin Parker and The Weeknd just all come together with such chemistry and work into the soundscape so effectively is very commendable. It's also pretty hard to say Sicko Mode isn't a highlight just based on the fact it's going to keep you on your toes the whole time with all these beat switches whether you dig them or not. But I would be lying if I said I didn't think that the first beat switch in particular didn't feel really abrupt. I mean, it, the song's building up all of this momentum and Drake's just starting to go in and then all of a sudden it just switches up and the bass gets punchier and more in your face and it's like, what the, where the fuck did that come from? But the second part, I have less of a problem with it because the bass and the drum kind of get all warped and distorted and then it kind of segues into the next part and it's like, okay, you know that like something's about to happen there, but yeah, um, 
I'll let it slide because it is, again, one of the more memorable tracks of the album. And if I'm stretching things a little bit, Carousel I have kind of come to appreciate too, just based on the way all the vocal samples come together and create a really psychedelic effect, and Frank Ocean sounds great on this track as well and works into it really harmoniously. If you're looking for a mindless banger type song, I would direct you to No Bystanders. I could see this hitting the spot for a lot of people. It is more animated and generally has more life than a lot of the other songs on the album. It just isn't a song that I would ever come back to. And I do like how the hook of Houston Fornication addresses wanting to get away from the monotony of your everyday life and environment. But um, the rest of the song strikes me as pretty run-of-the-mill, and that's the thing. There is like a seven-track stretch on this album that I literally got nothing out of no matter how many times I listened to it. I could not retain anything worth talking about in a review. I'm being serious, I was listening closely, but the vast majority of it is lifeless performances, the features add nothing, the production is pretty lazily handled, or the mixing is just frustrating. and. That's a pretty decent chunk of the album. I mean, there was a similar stretch of songs actually in Birds, so that's kind of funny, but yeah, I don't really think that the high points on this album are enough to save its ass in the grand scheme of things. So yeah, honestly, I'm feeling pretty indifferent towards this project, feeling like a five on this thing. That's about where I was for Birds in the Trap as well. Kind of a shame. I hope that this isn't the end of whatever Travis had going for him, but yeah, thank you for watching my review. If you could subscribe to my channel, that would be awesome. I really appreciate you. And yeah, we'll see you soon.